So once you're on this page, uh, you'll see that there's this little window right here. Um, that number right there is called an accession number. So when a genetics lab uploads their DNA sequence to the NCBI website, it's assigned a, an accession number. We don't need that for this purpose, so let's get rid of that. So I'm just going to delete that. And now we want to paste in the DNA sequence that we just copied. Uh, so again, I'm just going to go up to my edit and paste. And I just pasted in that exact same bit of DNA sequence that we copied on the previous page. Once that's in there, I'm gonna just do some checks here. I wanna make sure others is clicked on right there. I wanna make sure this says nucleotide collection. If not, you can just pull down the window and find that. Um, so others, nucleotide collection, and then scroll down. And notice here it says highly similar sequences. You don't want that, it's too stringent. We want to allow for room for evolutionary change. So um, we're going to click on somewhat similar sequences or blast in. Okay, once those checks are done, we are ready to blast. So let's blast the sequence. What that means is we're going to take this sequence we copied in a human, and it's going to blast it against the entire database. It's going to compare it to all the other DNA sequences for all species in this database. So we can see how similar the gene for it in the human is to other species. So ready? One, two, three, blast. Okay, once you've blasted it, it takes you to this website. And now it's gonna say it's working. It'll say, you know, update in two seconds, seven seconds, 12 seconds, it lies. It's gonna take a long time. So you just have to be patient. The more of the sequence you copied, the longer it's gonna take. So just be patient. You'll know you're done when you see a bunch of red lines pop up. So I'm going to pause the video until mine is done, and I'll be right back. Ta-da! Mine's done. It took about two minutes, and then it came up. So yours may take more or less, depending on your computer, how much of the sequence you copied, the speed of your internet, etc. So you definitely want high-speed internet to do this. So you see a bunch of red lines, and in fact, you want to see a lot of red lines. So as I scroll down here, this is good. This is like lots of red lines. What you don't want in a gene, and you won't. this won't be a problem for BRCA2, but as you're looking up other genes, if there hasn't been a lot of research done on that gene, um, then you're not going to get a lot of red lines. You'll see splotches and areas where there's blinks. So if there's blinks, that means that portion of the gene has not been sequenced for that particular species or, or DNA sample. So what you see here is the very first line is the sequence you queried, so what we copied and pasted. So that should be a line that goes all the way across. So in this case, it looks like I copied, you know, a little more than 2,250 2, base pairs. Um, you can see that this uh, entry right here doesn't have those first few sequence, but that's okay. I got enough here. So I'm going to scroll down. And then we get to the actual entries. Each one of these entries represents a different one of those red lines up there. And uh, so the first one is always the one you queried, human breast cancer susceptibility genes. So you, if you scroll over to the right here, you should see this means identity, means how much, uh, what percent of the DNA sequence here is identical to the one we queried. Well, since this is the one we queried, it should be 100%. Um, the next few are also humans. Skip over those because we're drawing an evolutionary tree. We want to see how things other than humans compare to the humans. So skip over other humans. The next one on here, um, in my case, is pantroglodytes. That happens to be a chimpanzee. And if you look at his identity, it's 99% genetically identical for this gene to the humans. How cool is that? And below that, gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. That's a gorilla. And he's also 99% identical. Um, etc. So these are all other primates. Again, skip over the Homo sapiens because we're only going to use the first one for that. That's a monkey. Um, here's a macaque. So you can see that the ones that are close in identity to what you queried are probably other primates. But as you scroll down, you'll see that you get to things other than humans. Like, uh, for example, um, this guy right here, <laughs> Equus cabalus, is a horse. Um, and if I move my talking head out of the way, I can see that that horse is 85% uh, genetically identical for this gene to a human. How 
how cool is that? And you go on, and this last one here, I love. This is a killer whale, you know, the black and white killer whales. And he's 84% genetically identical. And he swims in the ocean. He has the gene for breast cancer. Who who'd have thought it? Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to start downloading these DNA sequences for about eight species or so. Uh, you could do more. You don't want to do a lot less because you won't get a good tree. So I'm going to show you how this is done. So again, I'm going to move my head somewhere out of the way. Yeah, I'll move me right in the middle for now. So I'm going to come up here. And the first one you always want to download is for the human. So let me go ahead and move myself out here. So um, here's the name of the entry. I'm going to scroll over to where it says accession number. And I'm going to right click if you're using a Windows PC or uh, put two fingers at the same time if you're using a Mac. And you might have to do it a couple times here. Uh, you should get a window that allows you to open the link in a new window. So that's the one you want. So click on open link in new window. And eventually the information for this um, entry for our query should pop up again. So we've already been to this before. Um, but what I want you to do now, and I won't explain right now why you're doing this, but I'll tell you in a little while. I want you to scroll down and find where it says CDS. So again, that means coding sequence. So this is going to give you which base number in the sequence um, starts off the actual part that codes for a particular um, amino acid and, and for the protein. So you need to write this down. So I got my pencil and some paper here. So I'm going to write down on my paper, I'm going to write human. So I remember I'm dealing with the human. And I'm going to write the base number that starts this number. I'm going to write this number right here. So this is the first base that starts the coding sequence. So in this case, it says 229. Now yours may differ if you copied a different section, um, a different length of section than I did um, for the sequence, but mine says 229. Once you've done that, click Add to Alignment. So again, if you went to this website directly from Google, um, it won't have this Add to Alignment button. So you have to get into the NCBI from within the Mega Software. So click on Add to Alignment, and it pulls this uh, sequence label up. Um, just hit OK. If you get really into the stuff, you can read books on this or visit YouTubes, and it'll tell you how to um, change this around, but hit OK. And up comes the Alignment Explorer. So this is where we're going to be downloading these DNA sequences for different species into. And then we're eventually going to align these sequences to create our phylogenetic tree. So um, you can collapse some of these windows by just going like this. Um, and this is the actual DNA sequence. And we're actually at the end of it over here. So what you do is you take your cursor and scroll back over until you get to the beginning. And notice if you remember from what we copied, it started with G's. Um, you can shorten the name of this or call it whatever you want. I'm just going to um, shorten this name to um, Homo sapiens, and I'm going to put in parentheses human. So I remember that that's a human. And click off. So that's the first entry. So we just, congratulations, you just entered the sequence for human into your alignment explorer. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and go back to um, the window about the human, and you can you can actually close this out. So I'm just going to close that. But don't close this one because this is the one with our actual um, blast here. So you want to go back to the blast page and now we're going to add a second species. So skip over any Homo sapiens. We don't want to add any more Homo sapiens. We got the one we quarried. So uh, then you can add, you know, enter your, um, you can download your chimp or your gorilla. So my next on my list right now is gorilla and it's 99% uh, identical to the human. So I'm just gonna go here to its accession number. Um, you know, right click, open a new window, and let it go ahead and call up. So what are we gonna do? We are going to scroll down to the coding sequence, the CDS. We're gonna write down with our pencil and paper the first number there. So I'm gonna write 234. So that means that the coding sequence for the gorilla starts at base number 234 in the sequence. Then I'm going to go up to the red cross sign, add to alignment. Hit OK. 
And uh, notice it's not colored, so you can just click anywhere in that sequence to get the colors. So here is the gorilla. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. You don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and change this to gorilla, gorilla. That's the species name of this guy. And in parentheses, I'm going to put gorilla. Okay, so there is my second species. I'm going to close out that window, go back to my blast search, and I'm going to enter the next one, Pantroglodytes. That's a chimp. So now I'm going to enter, enter that guy. I'm going to download him. Now, if I didn't know that Pantroglodytes was a chimp, here is how you can figure it out. Uh, write down the name Pantroglodytes so I don't, I don't forget how to spell it. So I'm going to write that down. Open up Google. So I'm going to go here to google.com. Type in the name of the species, Pantroglodytes. And you see a picture of it. If I, if I didn't like that picture, I could go to Google Images and see all these different pictures of Pantroglodytes on here. And in fact, I might want to go ahead and save a picture of him right now to my desktop because I'm going to be bringing some pictures and pasting them into my presentation of my tree here in a sec. So I'm just going to take this cute little guy here and I'm just going to save as I'm just going to type in here chimp. And I'm going to save them to my desktop so I can find them later. Okay, so now I know that Pantroglodytes is a chimpanzee. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the chimp here. So I'm going to go over here to Pantroglodytes and go on the accession number, open a new window. And you're right, we're going to enter the coding sequence, um, the start code on here. So we're going to scroll down once it loads up. Go down to CDS, write down that first number, which is 234, just like in the gorilla. Add to alignment. Hit OK. All right, so uh, we're going to keep doing this. In the next tutorial, I'll add a few more, and we'll continue on.